Hey guys! From the above description, it is a visual effects tutorial on how to change your eye color from vampires to zombies. This is the tutorial for you. This is the before and after of the footage, but let's get right into it. Alright. First thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be tracking the motion of our eye. So we're going to do that by going up to Layer, New, Null Object. Alright. From there, we're going to go down to our footage. Give it a right click and go to track motion. All right, so we have a track point that appears and what you're gonna do is you're going to open up your track point, place it over a high contrast area on the eye and then click the play button. Actually, we're gonna go to the first frame. It's better to do it that way. So we're gonna click the play button and we're gonna watch it track. I know I blink around five seconds. So every time you blink, you're gonna have to pause and do a manual adjustment. All right, so now that we're at five, we're going to keep going forward until I actually blink. Because when I blink, the point of reference actually disappears. And as you can see, this keyframe is off by a lot. All right, so now we're going to take our keyframe. We're going to drag it over to the area, basically to where the clustered area is, because it doesn't really matter. We just don't want it way over here. And then once our eye starts to reappear, we're going to adjust and put it back on the point of reference on the high contrast area. And then once we get that pretty decently, we're going to go ahead and track the rest of the eye. So basically you do that for every time you blink. All right. So now that that's all tracked, we're going to make sure it's on the null object that we want. For me, it's null four for you. It'll probably be null one, but whichever null is here. So we're going to click okay. And we're going to click apply. X and Y. Okay. All right. So from here, now we're going to be creating a mask around the eye so we can change the actual eye color. So we're going to go up to layer, new, solid. Now the color of the solid actually doesn't matter. So we're going to go with black just because black is pretty default and pretty colorful. All right. So, I mean, it looks pretty good, but we're actually going to hide that. Make sure that your black solid is actually above your null doesn't really i guess it doesn't have to be but i like to be in order here so we're going to zoom in on our eye pretty decently go up to our wonderful pen tool and we're going to create a circular mask around our eye on the black solid so hold and drag to create a like a curved line and create just create like a wonderful little mask around your eye Beautiful. Now our other eye actually doesn't have a mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our black solid, open up its mask properties and duplicate our first mask. Now we're going to take our duplicated mask and we're going to drag it over to our other eye and lightly fit it. But you see, I actually did something very bad here. Well, not terribly bad, but something that I don't like to do. I actually started at the very end of my timeline. I like to start at the beginning, so I'm actually going to go all the way back to the beginning and I'm going to now readjust my mask. So go back to the beginning of your timeline and adjust your mask properly. It makes it easier this way, I think. So follow me, but at the same time, don't follow me. <laughs> all right. Now that our masks are pretty good around the eye, we're going to close up this. And we're going to go to our parent or pick quick tool. We're going to parent the black solid to the null object. So if I turn this on, you can see the black circles. And now it is completely parented to my eye. But there is obviously some issue with this eye that needs to be dealt with. So now you're basically going to go in and manually adjust every, I like to do every second for the, um, the eye that I did not track and then every other second for the tracked eye, just to make sure everything is pretty perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll be back once I'm done. Really quick guys, I didn't mention this. You're gonna have to open your mask properties, go to your mask path and go ahead and do a keyframe. And then you will be able to adjust the mask whenever you want to. So now I'm gonna go in and manually adjust and then we're gonna get to the blink and I'll continue from there.
Alrighty then. So I think we're done with that. It looks pretty well tracked here. We're gonna take a quick look at it. I think it looks pretty good to me. Now, we have a problem here. I know all of you noticed it, but when we blink, actually the mask is still there. And that's obviously an issue. So we're gonna move a few keyframes to before we blink. Right here's fine. Actually, we're gonna go one more, just, nope, just kidding. Right here's about fine at 509. That's a pretty good time. And we're gonna set a keyframe there. And then we're gonna go up until our eyes reopen. Completely, that's about good for me. And then we're gonna set another keyframe. So I'm actually gonna work backwards from here. So let's see when our eyes completely shut. We're gonna hide this layer. And when our eyes completely shut, it's there. So now I'm gonna adjust this so it, the mask completely disappears. So let's go ahead and do that. Awesome. And now you're just gonna go up keyframes and down keyframes and adjust the mask accordingly. Alrighty, so we're pretty much done with that. Let's just give it a quick look at what we did. The eye movement, and then the blink is coming up. Beautiful. Alrighty then. But it's completely black and I look really creepy. Before we do anything though, we're gonna go ahead and rename these layers. We're gonna rename the null to iris null. And we're gonna rename the black solid to iris solid. Alrighty. So. Our very next step is we're going to be taking our footage layer and we're going to be duplicating it. Now, we're going to take our duplicated footage layer and we're going to drop it under the iris solid. From there, we're going to go over to our track mat option and we're going to click on the footage's track mat. And we're going to change it to alpha mat. Alrighty, so basically what we did here is if I hide our original footage layer, all we can see are my eyes which is really creepy at times, but life happens. You can see the blink and it looks pretty decent already. So our eyes are completely tracked now and we are ready to get straight into the color. So we're gonna click on our footage. This is how you're gonna be doing all of the coloring is actually on the footage layer. So we're gonna start off by doing effect, color correction, exposure. So I already know what exposure I want. I want 115 with bypass linear on, but you basically, you can just play around whatever you like. It's up to you and the effect that you're going for. So from there, I like to go up to effect. I gotta click on my footage first. Effect, color correction, and hue and saturation. Now this is where the actual coloring comes in. I like to click colorize, but you can technically mess with the saturation and lightness if you really want to in the master hue. But I personally just go straight to colorize and up my saturation so I can blatantly see which color I'm going for. I'm gonna go for a almost orangish color today. That looks pretty decent to me. I like that color. And then we're going to drop the saturation to about 70-ish. And then we're gonna drop our lightness as well. I like around 35-ish. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so from there, we're going to go to effect, color correction, and tint. All right, so this is the very last thing we're gonna be doing. As you can tell, it actually whited out the eyes, or grayscaled the eyes, I should say. But we're gonna change the map white to. Um, change it to any color you want. I personally, I'll, for this color, I'm gonna go for a lighter, almost orangish color. That's not bad. Maybe I would change, there we go, all right. So you're gonna change also the amount to tint. You're not gonna keep it at 100 usually. I like to keep it around, not much. Yeah, that 33 looks pretty decent to me. But if you notice, we're getting some pretty harsh edges around our eyes and it looks really fake. So to fix that, we're gonna go to our iris solid, open up our mask properties, which is double M, and we're gonna give it a feather. So we're gonna feather it by five. I like five. I feel like it's a pretty safe number. We're gonna feather this by five. So now that we feathered it, sometimes it's gonna bleed outside of the eye a little bit and I don't like that. So I'm actually gonna go to our mask 
expansion, I'm going to do it by negative one. So it shrinks the mask just a little bit. Alrighty. So this is the eye color change, and we're just going to go through and see what we have. I think that looks pretty good. Blink looks really good as well. And that's what we have, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, there is some small things that we could do. Um, as you can notice, our pupils actually aren't really visible. They're kind of blending in. So a really quick fix to that is actually creating an adjustment layer. So go to Layer, New, Adjustment. All right, with our adjustment layer, oh, that voice crack though. <laughs> with our adjustment layer, we're going to go over to our rectangle tool, but we're going to change it to our lips tool. Make sure you're on your adjustment layer and you're going to create an ellipse around an ellipse around where your pupil would be. But hold down shift to make that perfect circle. Alrighty, so now we have our pupil and this pupil just looks weird. But make also, again, make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline, unlike me. That's crazy and doesn't know how to do that. I don't like to make it the full size, so. But now we need to make it for our other people. So to go ahead and duplicate that mask and drag the duplicated mask over to our new people. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, that's pretty good. So now that... That is all said and done. We're going to rename this to pupil. Aha. Well, it's more pupils, I guess. So from there, we're going to take our parent tool again. We're going to parent it to the iris null. So look what happens. It is parented to the iris null. You can't see it, but I know it is. If you run through it like this, it's parented pretty well. And except this one is freaking out. So we're going to have to let me quickly adjust these and do the blink and we'll get back. Alrighty, that looks pretty good to me. So from here, it doesn't change the pupils. So in order to change the actual color, we're going to go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Now, just adjusting the RGB channel, it's going to get darker. You don't want it completely black, but I like it around almost the middle. So this is when pupils are on, and this is when pupils are off. You can tell there's a significant difference and it looks pretty good. We're also going to give it a feather. I'm only going to do it by one because, I mean, the five is way too much for that mass size. So, pupils off, on, off, on. I might drop it a little lower just because I feel like it. But that is basically that. You can change the um, opacity as well, but I'm actually going to keep mine all the way up. Pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at everything we have done. Bam! That looks pretty good. Let's add a basic color correction. Yep, wish it was that easy. Well, comment down below what you would like to see next. Hit that subscribe and like button. See you next time.